Uh, good morning. Thank you for braving the elements. Oh, this morning we were booked in for between 25 and 30 people. And I think occasionally if you glance through the window, as I mentioned to Mark already, you might see the occasional person floating past down the road who hasn't quite made it in in time. Um, for those of you who haven't met me before, my name is Martin Bailey. I'm a word of mouth marketing specialist. Yes! You're probably thinking, I'm the only one I've ever met before. This is what I do and I absolutely love it. The reason being, oh, years ago, I was a productivity specialist. So I went round to all sorts of manufacturing companies and said to them, this is how to improve your productivity, by cutting costs. And I got sick of that because as soon as you start cutting costs, it basically means removing people. And that's terrible. With any organisation, it doesn't actually grow when you do that. It shrinks. It's an awful place to go. And I thought there's got to be something better for all industries to do to grow instead of shrinking. Now, first of all, in 99, I came across networking and referral marketing. And then since then, I've looked at this subject, which is word of mouth marketing. And it's the oldest form of marketing there is, bar none. It's the most successful form of marketing there is, bar none. But nobody ever speaks about it. People speak about everything else apart from this. And this morning, what I'd like to do is two outcomes that I'd like to get to give you from this workshop. First one being, just to show you very quickly how WOM, word of mouth marketing, I hate acronyms, I'm sorry, but WOM is a lot shorter than writing word of mouth marketing every time. How WOM works, and also to encourage you, you've already got a word of mouth marketing strategy, but I want you to look at it and refine it and develop it a little bit more. Because once it's set up and running, there's not a hell of a lot more you need to do. And it's a great way to generate support and more business. Stop me at any point during the meeting, by the way. Uh, ask a question. Toilets are through this door, along the corridor. Not this door. This door is the kitchen. You'll notice the difference. Kitchen, <laughs> toilets, along the corridor. Great. Uh, it's not going to be me talking all morning, I do have exercises for you. And here's the first one. On the back of a piece of paper with a pen, I would like you to do this exercise. Has anyone not got a pen? Put your hands up to all please, and I'm going to a pen. Does anybody have a pen? Do anybody have any spare pens? <laughs> <laughs> yes, if anyone wants to rent a pen, special rate today. I could recommend you a pen. Oh, <laughs> snap a pen in half. Uh, the beauty of the exercise is you can do it in your head. Oh, right, oh, I suppose so. You can do it in your head, but it's good if you can write it down. Uh, I'm sure we'll uh, end up rustling up a couple of pens just now, but uh, for those who haven't got any. Right, advert or recommendation. What we've got there is 10 professions. What I'd like you to write down is alongside each one, the place where you get your hair cut. Did you pick that based on an advert, so you're just walking past the place, or did somebody say, you want to go there, because that's the place to go? The same all the way down, so the next one. Your favourite restaurant. Did you pick it based on an advert, an offer, or did you pick it based on somebody else's personal recommendation? So all the way down the list, so put an A or an R next to each one. So you've got 1 to 10, A or R. If anyone doesn't understand, just say, Martin, I don't understand. Hokey cokey, when you've done that, I'd like you to total up the total number of R's you've got and work it out as a percentage of the total. Nobody said we'd be working this hard first thing in the morning, come on. So, let's just take a look around the room. How many people have got seven or above in terms of R for recommendation? Yeah, seven or above. Hands up again please, come on, hands up again. Take a look around the room, that's what, 50 or 60% of the people in the room who are saying 7 out of 10 of those items are based on recommendation rather than advert. So point number one from this is, and it's very important, word of mouth marketing or personal recommendation is already active in your life. You are already part and parcel of it. You already subscribe to it, whether you believe it or not. Oh no, it's happening. Ah, We're all involved in it. 
Next slide. Word of mouth marketing is not social media. Oh. Word of mouth marketing is not social media. 10% of all conversations about brands, products or services occur online, wow. But 90% occur offline. Most of the people who talk about your business are doing it face to face, not online, face to face. And yet, this is the stuff we don't talk about. And this is the stuff we're gonna talk about today because if this is happening, this is the biggie, this is what we all in business need to know more about. People talking, what are they saying? Why are they saying it? What are people actually buying into? Interesting statistic. Next one. Ooh. Another one of my personal favorites. The New York Times on Sunday contains more information than the average 18th century person would come across in a lifetime. Wow. Wow. Incredible. But let's take the acid test in terms of advertising or anything along those lines. Let's, let's do the show of hands again. Please look around the room. When adverts come onto the TV, what do you do? Fast forward. Fast forward, turn the volume off, change channel, anything else? Make a cup of tea. Make a cup of tea, yeah. What about the next one? With junk mail in your letterbox. Rubbish bin. Rubbish bin, anything else? Do you, sit, do you read through it? Come on, uh, own up, own up. You may be the only person, yeah, there we go. <laughs> ah, okay. But mostly it goes in the bin. What about company brochures? Come on, be, um, be open about this. What do you do when somebody gives you a company brochure? Yes, most people do. Company brochures go in the bin. What about email marketing? You remember that bloke, what's his name, Martin Bailey, who sent you an invite to come to the seminar. Did you read it the first time or did you ignore it? People ignore stuff. Last one, ads on social media sites, Facebook, and so on and so on. People don't care. People don't look at this stuff, and yet most of our marketing budgets or thought processes goes into exactly that. People don't care. And this is why. You know, a friend of mine, a colleague, sent me a survey yesterday, um, and she's a, a neuropsychologist. And one of the things she's finding out is that people are getting so, so tired, so brain tired, that people just don't read their stuff, they don't care, and they're too tired to read it. So all our marketing efforts potentially are falling on deaf ears. Nobody cares. We live in an age of information. Too much, way, way too much information. Oh, come back, get off. Hey. There we go, there we go. Now, be honest. <laughs> the last piece of software that you downloaded, and we've been downloading quite a bit just recently, Wayne, I know that, yeah. When was the last time you actually read through those terms and conditions? Have you ever, seriously, have you ever read them? Yeah, 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 three people here. I read them the first time, you know, got my computer back in the, in the 80s, no, 90s, and read it, and got bored halfway through. Click, nah, nobody reads it, nobody cares. In the age of the information overload, the simplifier is king. That's number two. Number one, you're involved with word of mouth and personal recommendation. Number two, whatever marketing material we put out, it's got to be simple because people are not going to read lots and lots of stuff anymore. Take a look at this. A history of marketing. Cave chaps to the present day. I said cave chaps because I didn't know if it was going to be cave men, cave women, cave people. So cave chaps I thought it would be. Right from the year dot, and we were talking about this, I was talking about this with Alan, I think, when you first came in. Right the way back to the start of marketing, we started off with printing, then we went to radio, then to TV, then the internet, then to mobile, social media, and then NBT. NBT. What's NBT? The next big thing. The next big thing, whatever it is. But the thing that's going on in the background is this. 
Word of mouth marketing from the year dot through to now is word of mouth marketing. What we've tended to do is focus on those of, as being the absolute winner. It's got to be this. We've got to do the mobile. We've got to do social media. We've got to do the internet. We've got to do radio. We've got to do print. Those are only tools. Any of those are just tools. The big thing is this. It always has been, and I'll say something now, I think it always will be. Because one of the things we forget is we're emotional beings. When we buy any product or service, whoever we are, we buy based on our emotions. And emotions are a hard thing to put across in any of the others, a lot better to do face to face. And there are good reasons for that. Because there are good reasons why, because we've all been stung in the past. Take a look at that, independent market research. Lots of market research agencies know this. 90% of customers prefer word of mouth marketing to any other form of marketing. They value it as the best source about new products, ideas, services, anything. And Yanklovic says, and only 14% of people trust advertisers. Ooh, thank goodness we're not marketing agencies. Thank goodness we don't advertise. Oops. We all advertise. 